All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I feel like now is a good time to take a look at where the commanders rank in a lot of important statistics. Are we better than last year, or are we worse than last year? Um, you'll be pretty surprised with certain statistics where we're better and where we're worse. Now, overall, yes, we've we're worse in a lot of categories but we are surprisingly better in some as well and i feel like before this dolphins game comes in with arguably the league's best offense to throw a lot of this data off and make it way worse than it already is i feel like this is a good time to check up on where we rank in a lot of categories also i have some interesting stats that are, that'll lead up to that dolphins game as well and why this game could get ugly um, you know, I'm rooting for us to at the very least look competent. Like I said, my main goals going into all of these games for the remainder of the season, I would love a top five draft pick. But my main thing is Sam Howell developing and looking great out there. And a lot of our younger guys like Quan Martin, Emmanuel Forbes is hurt, but like Quan Martin, Jahan Dotson, I want to see guys like that go out there and get better. Finish the season strong, go into the next season, or well, specifically go into this offseason with a little bit more confidence and momentum. Um, and also a better idea of what you need to work on the more they play the more they'll know about themselves weaknesses and strengths and they'll be able to you know hone in on certain things in the offseason so i want to play the young guys as much as possible winning games is no longer the priority we need to be evaluating these players and developing these players that's first and foremost so heading into this dolphins game i have some interesting stats as far as that goes and then i have a lot of very random interesting stats first of all london fletcher was named a semi-finalist for the hall of fame class of 2024 it's crazy that he's not there yet just period but we're going to talk about that for a little bit also the commanders are project we right now have we have the fifth overall pick because again the the bears it, the, even though we have the same record and they beat us strength of schedule is the primary tiebreaker um but espn predicts that we will finish with the fifth overall pick when it's all said and done with this season and it's hard for me to argue against that and we're going to take a look at the schedule again and, and see why also i want to give y'all an updated um, list of all of our draft picks like what are all every single draft pick that we own right now where is it in the draft um what exact number all of that type of stuff so we're going to be looking at a lot of numbers and stats and stuff today with this video i'm super excited but before we dive into all of that make sure you still farm that like button still farm the subscription button still farm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned because again daily content be on the lookout for my birthday video coming out tomorrow november 30th at 3 p.m is set as a premiere so the video will basically live stream i'll be there with y'all watching it um it's a full breakdown on eugene shin and what he's bringing to the commanders how he likes to build his teams all of that and again i'm releasing it on my birthday it's one of my favorite videos i've worked on in a while it has it's like one of the videos that i've worked on has made me the most optimistic about being a burgundy and gold fan moving forward so i felt like it was only right to release it on my birthday so um, make sure y'all pull up and watch that with me and celebrate my birthday and all of that man i'm super Super excited um so much more content coming out so make sure y'all stay tuned i'm trying to get it to where i'm coming out with daily videos um even if i'm not home and stuff like that i'm working on videos ahead of time like trying to record multiple in a day so i can have them coming out in the future all kinds of stuff so make sure y'all stay tuned man and um and also support the channel sorry for the long intro i know i say that a lot in a lot of my videos but i truly am sorry i just i just have so much to say but i try to hurry up and get through it without further ado man let's go ahead and get to it let's get it he's our quarterback for the five ten years and i truly believe that All right, so this Miami Dolphins versus Washington Commanders matchup is not looking too good. Right now, the Miami Dolphins lead the NFL by scoring 15 touchdowns outside of the red zone. Washington leads the NFL in reverse by giving up the most touchdowns from outside of the red zone with 16. So it's kind of like what happens when an unstoppable force meets, meets a movable object, not an immovable object, a movable object. Like when the best at something goes against the worst at stopping that thing, what is that going to look like? So I'm very afraid for how this game might turn out. I mean, again, my main objective and the things I care about the most to finish this 2023 regular season is for our guys to develop and for Sam Howe, most importantly, to develop, go out there and ball out and look like the franchise quarterback for this next regime that's taken over, led by Eugene Shin, Josh Harris, and whatever GM, head coach, and defensive coordinator they all bring in and stuff like that. Maybe even a new offensive coordinator. We'll see. Um, so, but there's a there's definitely a strong case scenario to where 
Sam Howell goes out there and balls out over 300 yards passing, three touchdown passes, no interceptions, and we still lose the game. That's actually very likely. Again, the Dolphins are bad team eaters, or at the very least, below 500 team eaters. If your team is above 500, they struggle. If your team is below 500, they feast. Um, so, and uh, at four and eight, uh, we're not very close to uh, being at 500. Above, definitely not. So, uh, I don't know. It may get ugly out there. Um, also, the Dolphins are averaging three drives per touchdown this season. That's the best drives per touchdown rate in the NFL. The league average is 5.1. So while the league average, it takes them 5.1 drives to score a touchdown every time. It's only taking the Dolphins three drives to score. So say the Dolphins somehow end up running like 12 drives. It's predicted that they will score at least four touchdowns just based on how they've been doing this season and score a minimum of 28 points we'll see how that goes man and then what also makes it worse is the fact that this is going to be ron rivera's first game calling defensive plays since what like 2019 and to have to do that against the best offense and football arguably is really interesting if anything actually you can look at it one way where like man that's hell that sucks but you can look at it the other way where people are going in like yeah you have all of the built-in excuses already there before the game even happens because nobody's expecting you to be able to shut down the Dolphins defense, even with an elite defense, but let alone a defense that you just took over for like basically like a, a little over a week ago because we played Thursday night and we're not playing again until the next Sunday. Um, so, and you just fire your defensive coordinator. There's a lot of turnover. Your first round pick cornerback, even though he hasn't necessarily played very well all season, he's hurt. He won't play. So, um, your FL bottom, I mean, he's not like, one of the best defensive ends in the world but there was a reason that we cared about him playing and wanted him to play as much as possible he's on ir for darian mathis a second round pick still has not shown up other than fumbling uh recovering a fumble that i think cameron curl for so if anything that's more of a cameron curl play than him um so we're not really going in with a lot of expectations so ron rivera can honestly go over, go into this game being his first game running a defense again for years um since literally like 2019 since before he hired jack the as, as his defensive coordinator and he can allow th more than 30 points and people are not even going to be too mad at him it's his first week as defensive coordinator technically again and he's going against the best offense in football so if anything i mean i know that's a really tough situation to be in but at the end of the day he's probably chilling like eh, nobody really expects much out of me anyway so really we're playing with house money and any good we do it will be a compliment towards me any bad that we do people are just gonna say well we kind of expected that to happen just like that the way we got whooped by the cowboys i mean the whole ron rivera will not be fired unless barring any unforeseen circumstances i told you before the game happened we were gonna lose by 20 or 30 or more told you literally before the game started so that's not unforeseen we foresaw that and ron rivera is still here right now he'll more than likely finish out the season anyway and get and, you know he'll be gone after the season um and, and for reasons i've already explained just eugene shen alone when you see that video break down tomorrow um but yeah um ron rivera the fact that he's still here lets you know that even josh harris foresaw that happening he said un any unforeseen circumstances then we'll fire ron rivera mid-season but when you lose 45 to 10 and the guy is still here that's how you know they foresaw that so i'm pretty sure he also foresees and most of us anybody probably with a brain foresees us um getting dropped off um this sunday at 1 p.m <laughs> against the dolphins man i'm scared though i'm not gonna lie i don't want to go i don't want us to go out there and get just straight up embarrassed i still want to have a top draft pick but boy can we at least go out there with the offense and go back and forth with them guys or something also shouts out to uh russell mania chris russell over there at locked on commanders he brought up a great stat the commanders have a hurry percentage of 7.1 percent qb hurries per drop back and a blitz percentage of 25.9 percent this year those stats uh, trends are up significantly from last year's mark when they had the second worst hurry percentage in the nfl of 4.2 percent and a blitz rate of 22.4 percent basically middle of the pack so it's really interesting that even though it seems like Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne are having down years, like statistically, when you're looking at just sacks, the base stats, the surface stats that most, you know, casual people just look at. When you're looking at advanced statistics, technically, the defensive line has been better this year. Um, but a lot of that is also because Chase Young was a top 10 edge rusher, according to a lot of advanced metrics before we traded him away. So we'll see how that goes. We'll definitely um, keep track and see 
for the rest of the season how those guys produce. Hopefully they can start to get their sack numbers up again. Already did a video breakdown on it a few days ago where Ron Rivera spoke about in his press conferences um, some of the changes that he's going to immediately make to the defense, some things he's going to experiment with. And one of the main things he emphasized, one of his primary points, was getting Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne in more one-on-one -on -one situations so they can get those stats. Because again, they're not getting a lot of sacks, but they've been doing, they've been playing well this season. It's just very quietly kept because they haven't been getting the main stat that people look at, and that is sacks. Um, that's just something they haven't been able to really be able to do consistently. Um, Deron Payne had like 11 and a half last year. He only has like two this year. Now that's still underperforming. We're not going to sit here and act like that's just okay, but there's a reason for that, especially after trading away Chase Young and Montez Sweat they're starting to see more double teams, hence the reason why Ron Rivera wants to get them in more one-on-one -on -one situations. That's like a real priority goal and goal for him moving forward to the rest of the season. Um, another interesting stat, though, and I brought this up in my Eric Bieniemy breakdown about how um, the players will not recommend him to be the next head coach. One of the positives that he has brought to this team is that he has unlocked the running backs. Brian Robinson is fourth in pro football focus run block grade. He was not a good run blocker um, until this year, honestly. And now he looks like a really good run blocking running back. Pro Football Focus feels like he's the fourth best at it. Um, and then fourth in receive and pass blocking too is really interesting as well. Then he's fourth in receiving yards. That's really interesting. Out of all running backs in the NFL, he's fourth in receiving yards. And a lot of people see saw him as like just a pure thumper. First and second down back, you got to take him off the field on third downs, where if he's blocking well and he's fourth in receiving yards, that means he's an every down playmaking running back. They can do everything. He can be on the field no matter the situation. He's fifth in 10 plus yard runs, so he's still doing his primary job, which is running in between the tackles very well as well. Even running outside the tackles, which a lot of people felt like he wouldn't be good at. He's fifth out of all running backs in 10 plus yard runs. So he's an explosive running back there as well. And then he's also eighth in yards after contact. So what he's known for with breaking tackles and being able to fall forward, get those extra yards and stuff like that, he's eighth in the NFL at that out of all running backs so of all of those stats i gave you he's at the very least eighth in all in a lot of important running back stats and eric bien deserves a lot of credit for that um the play designs and stuff like that um the florida game now his problem is that he doesn't run the ball more we're gonna we're gonna like break that down when we get to the where we rank in a lot of key statistics in the nfl we're gonna look at passing game overall points and stuff penalties um points allowed for the defense points scored by the offense yards allowed by the defense yards gained by the, the offense all that type of stuff we're going to take a full look um and basically eric bien has this running game very efficient but at the same time he doesn't utilize it as much as he should so it's a positive and a negative again we'll look at that soon also cbs's broadcast of the commanders cowboys game on thanksgiving averaged 41.8 million viewers tv and digital that's the second most watched nfl regular season game on record only behind last year's cowboys Giants game on Thanksgiving so that's a that's a really bad time to get embarrassed 45 to 10 that was like the worst time so you know Josh Harris is definitely embarrassed because he's coming in to win he don't care about nothing else but winning and to get embarrassed like that in the second most watched game in the regular season yeah that's that's unacceptable you know he knows that you know he knows how many people were watching that and how embarrassed he felt so there's definitely going to be some major changes coming up I'm telling you right now now, also, before we move on to some major statistics and really start breaking everything down, one interesting statistic right now is that so far through this season, we up to this point, we've had the 30th ranked strength of schedule, which means we've had the third easiest schedule in the NFL, according to TeamRankings.com. Now, our future strength of schedule is third in the NFL like the third toughest so we're going from the third easiest to the third toughest um from this point this is like the dividing line this uh, th before we play the dolphins um so again just to remind you for those of y'all that may not have figured it out yet we have to play the dolphins then we have a bye week then we have the rams who are going crazy with matthew stafford especially that's a georgia bulldog right there what do you expect then we have the jets with aaron Rodgers probably making his debut back then and even without aaron Rodgers, i mean i i just wouldn't what we what we've done versus guys like tommy devito i mean the giant second and third string quarterbacks justin fields didn't really even have a good game until he went against us uh i mean just what we've allowed other quarterbacks to do uh, mac jones is out here getting benched almost on a weekly basis and even though we did beat the Patriots and he didn't have a good game against us he didn't get benched 
So it wasn't like one of his worst games of the season against us. Geno Smith was out here trying to sell the game away, and he still found a way to beat us. So, it, you know, I at this point, even the Jets, I'm not too sure about. And then after the Jets, you have the 49ers, and then the Cowboys again, who just beat us 45-10 to 10 last week. So, I mean... We'll see how this goes, man. That strength of schedule is really ugly, but that's a good thing as far as a top draft pick. Um, we had the third easiest strength of schedule and we're four and eight. What are we going to do when we have the third most difficult strength of schedule remaining for the season? Now, let's start to get to a lot of the stats. That's probably why most of y'all are here. When it comes to overall offense, points per game were 20th in the NFL. Yards per game were 14th. Points per play were 21st. Yards per play were 19th. Third down percentage um, conversion rate were 18th. Fourth down con conversion percentage rate were 21st. Red zone scoring touchdown wise were 11th in the NFL and touchdowns per game with 2.3 were 15th. Now, I don't know if y'all want like the full exact numbers on everything. I prefer to just give y'all the rankings. If you like want all of this, the stats, not just the rankings, but the exact numbers that we're doing like per game and all that type of stuff, then you can go to teamrankings.com and, um, and all the stats are there. Just go to the Washington Commanders, go to Overview and all that type of stuff. But I'm just trying to mostly pay attention to the ranks and basically kind of compare it to what we did last year. So right now, we're pretty much somewhere around average in most overall offensive statistics this year. And that is technically a step up from Scott Turner last year. But also, you got to remember that Eric Bieniemy, in my opinion, and to most people's opinions, does have the way better quarterback in Sam Howell than what we were dealing with with Carson Wentz and Taylor Heineke. So you kind of got to take a little bit of credit away from Eric Bieniemy. At the same time, give him some credit back because you can definitely argue that Sam Howell's balling out because of Eric Bieniemy in certain ways. But I also just think Sam Howell's that guy. But either way, we definitely have improved slightly in offense, especially efficiency-wise on a per-game basis and where we rank in the NFL um, going into this season with Eric Bieniemy than we were with Scott Turner. Oh, overall um but we're still pretty average even though we are 11th in red zone scoring so in the red zone we're a top 11 team almost top 10 team in the nfl which is really interesting and also yards per game we're 14 so we're right up there but everything else we're somewhere like in the middle third down conversion rate though um 18th is not terrible but it's also not great um, and then looking at the defensive side of the ball, this is where it's terrible. This is where we've regressed mightily because we're dead last in, in opponent's points per game allowed by the defense. We're 29th in opponent's yards per game by the defense. We're dead last in opponent's points per play so it's points per play and points per game we're dead last so no matter which way you look at it our defense is allowing the most points in the nfl regardless of what metric you look at efficiency anything um opponents yards per play we're 30th um third down conversions though we're 18th that's an improvement from last year from what i remember i remember complaining so much about last year third down percentage actually not overall the first half of the season well first few games we were terrible against third downs then we got it better now we're 18th so that's probably around the same level that we were last year if anything we may have even regressed there fourth down conversion percentage allowed now granted we did play the eagles with that tush push twice so that's kind of unfair but we're 25th there um opponents red zone scoring as far as touchdowns when they get in the red zone with 20th and allowing and those and we're also 32nd in opponents touchdowns allowed per game and again these are efficiency things these are per game things so we're not talking about oh but the commanders have not gone on a bye week yet and other teams have so you kind of got to take a game no these are per game stats that we're talking about and we're dead last in quite a few categories there and at best average in third down um, conversion percentage allowed by defense everything else is just straight up bad in the 20s or lower and again did last in certain ways now offense wise rushing wise um, we are 32nd in rush play percentage so we run the ball the least we run the ball 32% of the time and we pass it the other 68%. That's the biggest gap in the NFL. We're first in passing play percentage and dead last in running play percentage. So something with Eric Bieniemy feels like with this red shirt freshman rookie quarterback who I feel like has a lot of traits to be an elite quarterback. But at the same time, he felt like now is the time to run the ball the least he's ever done and run the ball less than any other team in the NFL. The reason that's so crazy to me, though, is that we are 4.5 yards per rush which is sixth in the nfl right now so we have the sixth most efficient running game in the nfl but we run it the least out of everybody in the nfl 
which is just like, why do we not run the ball more? And you saw once we started to run the ball more, we were actually be, be able to run the ball pretty successfully. Even against the Cowboys at times, we were running the ball successfully. And um, even the game before that, um, against the Giants, when we started to run the ball, it just felt like they couldn't really stop us. Really, Eric Bieniemy is the one stopping us by just not calling any more run plays. And we've been screaming at him to run the ball all season, it feels like. Um, but yeah, rushes per game were 30th, rushing yards per game were 25th, and rushing touchdowns per game were 15th, um, which is really interesting. Now, the defense has been terrible, but against the run, we've actually hasn't been, haven't been that bad. Um, we're 25th in opponents rushing yards per game, but when it comes to rushes per game, teams only run it against us 11, um, 11th in the NFL, which is really interesting. But opponents rush yards per game, we've allowed um, is is a 17th my fault so earlier we are 25th in yards per rush so teams are pretty efficient against us but overall um they're 17th in rushing yards per game and then rushing touchdowns per game we're seventh only on allowing 0 0.6 so hey man you can pass the ball as much as you want against us um but don't you better not run it that's what it, that's basically what it says and we're still not elite at it but at least we're average as far as stopping and run on defense um and then passing the ball wise on offense again passing play percentage we lead the nfl at 68 percent um but completion percentage were 13th which is pretty good shouts out to sam Howell for that yards per pass were 24th not very great but it is a west coast offense so we're not attacking deep down the field as much as other teams do especially with the old line that we have that eric benemy tried he tried to try to get some long development routes tried to hope that the offensive line can block long enough for us to get some deep shots thrown down the field but it didn't work out eric benemy had to basically throw away half of his playbook and adjust to the fact that this offensive line can't hold up for too long and that's why we just embrace the whole short game slants comeback routes out right all that type of stuff that's why we don't attack down the field that much but passes per game of course we're number one in the nfl and at the same time passing yards per game being ninth is cool that sounds nice but when you throw the the for the most out of the nfl and you're only ninth in passing yards that's not very efficient um also it interceptions thrown percentage with 24th that's not great and also qb sack percentage with 29th but i'm glad to hear that sam howell is no no longer did last now defensively um completion percentage wise we've allowed the 12th uh we're 12th um best at allowing the least completion percentage so that's decent but opponent passing yards per game with 31st that's not good we're 22nd in passes per game so teams you know don't really throw it against us as much as uh, uh as other teams i guess um opponents yards passing yards per game with 30th that's awful and we're 28th in interception percentage thrown so teams just don't really throw interceptions against us we just don't get interceptions and then we're 11th in sack percentage though we're actually doing pretty well there um top 11 in the nfl there but most stats again our defense is terrible now turnover wise we're pretty terrible um it's not good at all this it's really not good at all man when it comes to turnover margin per game we're dead last that's not good so that's on the offense and the defense that's not good at all but one thing that we're surprisingly pretty good at is penalties because we we rank seventh in penalties per play we rank seventh in penalties per game we rank fourth in penalty yards per game and we rank seventh in penalty yards um per penalty so we, uh, penalty wise we're, we're top seven in the nfl top 10 in the nfl that's not too bad man that's really interesting now moving on before we get up out of here um a lot of y'all may want to know where we currently stand throughout the entire draft like uh, everybody knows we have the fifth overall pick right now I already did a video breaking down breaking that down like a few days ago as well so we have the fifth overall pick in the first round the 36th overall pick in the second round the 38th in the second round the 69th in the third and then the 100th in the third and then in the fourth round we have the 106th then the fifth we have the 140th sixth 183rd and then seventh 224 so we have five top 100 picks six top 106 picks or if you want to look at it as we have three top 40 picks um four top 70 picks uh that's really cool man six top 106 picks is 
franchise changer for whoever comes in and wants to have an immediate impact on this team, along with the fact that we could potentially have almost $100 million in cap space if you release cut Charles Leno in the offseason. Um, we have so much room to grow here and potentially a franchise quarterback and Sam Howell on a cheap fifth-year rookie deal, man. We can we can make some things shake this offseason. I'm telling you that now. And again, like I spoke about earlier, Washington is currently projected to finish with the fifth overall pick as well, according to ESPN's FPI data and all of that type of stuff. So that's really interesting. It sounds like we're probably solidified to stay with that fifth pick. If anything, maybe even move up. I mean, the Bears just won yesterday against the Vikings. Um, I don't I don't exactly know the rest of their schedule, but if they win another game this season and we don't win any more games, we can move up to the fourth pick or even better, which is really crazy. And again, looking at the schedule, Dolphins, Rams, Jets, 49ers, Cowboys. If we couldn't beat the Bears even once, the, the two times we played them, if we barely beat the Patriots, we couldn't beat the Seahawks when they were trying to literally give us the game. We could, we got embarrassed by the Bears, who have the fourth overall pick right now. Uh, if we couldn't beat them, I don't know how we could beat anybody. I guess you can look at our schedule and say the Jets are probably our easiest opponent, but they also have one of the toughest defenses we're going to go against all season. And right now, our only hope is our offense because our defense is bad. I wouldn't be surprised whether it's Zach Wilson or the other guy starting for the Jets. They, they're able to abuse our defense. I wouldn't be surprised at all. So even though our technically least tough game remaining is the Jets, I wouldn't pick us to win that game because, we again, we couldn't even beat the Giants or the Bears, dog. Um, also, really random. Brandon Sheriff missed games from 2017 to 2021 with Washington, 24. So far, Brandon Sheriff, since the 2022 season, has missed zero games for the Jaguars. How? He missed at least two games in each of the last five seasons with the Washington Commanders. And somehow, he hasn't missed a single game for the Jaguars. At this point, it's got to be us, y'all. It's got to be. I know that stat doesn't really have much to deal with us, per se, as far as how this team currently is or the future of the Commanders. But I felt like that was a random stat that I saw that Ben Standig tweeted out that I just felt like that had to be talked about, man. We had to talk about it. Also, shouts out to London Fletcher. He was named the semifinalist for the Hall of Fame class of 2024. It's absolutely ridiculous ridiculous that he's not in there already i mean if you compare his stats to ray lewis and guys like that it's so comparable like if you did the little test where you're like you have london fletcher stats and a guy like ray lewis or another hall of fame linebacker but you don't say who is which you'd be like well this guy is like just as good as this guy at least statistically and he does have a ring even though he didn't get it with us he has a ring so i thought that you know i think he definitely deserves to be in also i'm seeing somewhere that joe jacoby is now a three times finalist once again and he also has three rings so get our boy in there man he's been eligible since 1999 the fact that he's not in there is absolutely wild get joe jacoby in there as well and then before we get up out of here i also want to remind y'all that the miami dolphins are the hard knock hard knocks guys um so we'll We'll get a little bit of hard knocks um after we play the dolphins going into that next week we'll probably get some hard knocks clips and things like that um they probably won't focus on this so it won't be that significant but i did want to give you the heads up just in case you care to watch it um just to be on the lookout for that you know hbo runs all of that they need to go ahead and stop playing and sponsor me man i had y'all looking right on here on youtube man um but yeah man that's the end of this video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Again, be on the lookout for the daily uploads. I have so much content I need to work on. And anytime any breaking news comes out, um, I'm having to just push all of my ideas back another day and it just keeps getting pushed back and back. But we're getting a lot of those out now. So I'm super excited. Also be on the lookout because this upcoming game against the Dolphins may get a little ugly, but I'm hoping it's a very offensive game like a shootout. That's what I'm rooting for. For, but ultimately i do want that high draft pick i'm not even gonna sit here and lie to you you know i'm the draft goat you know i love team building you know i love the offseason you know i'm secretly a gm in my heart so i would love nothing more than the high draft pick so we can get a little creative with this offseason with mock drafts and stuff like that that's also stuff i'm working on so be on the lookout for some mock drafts all of that type of stuff man i'm super excited um and yeah man definitely make sure you support the channel at the very least leave a like on the way out and of course let me know in the comment section how you feel about everything discussed in this video all of the the glaring stats on offense defense stuff like that this matchup against the dolphins everything and yeah man without further ado i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out